welcome back you're still watching ways now global movie day is today and the second saturday in february celebrates global movie day to honor the way movies have captured audiences hearts and minds around the world for over a hundred years it is celebrated by watching and discussing um, uh, movies that have inspired your uh, you throughout the year and also share movie recommendations and discover ones you've never seen before yeah which movie has inspired you in the past would i say inspire i think um for me two movies stand out uh shawshank redemption and memoirs of a geisha so they were just films that made me think differently so it's maybe not so much inspiration but just the concept of institutionalization from Shawshank Redemption and just, you know, what you can make of your life. Mm. If, you, if you've seen Memoirs of a Geisha, it's, it's quite a touching movie. But um, I think movies are, some people like horror movies, I don't know why. Me, I, I like you. action movies. Are you kidding? I, no. Well, I, I love, I mean, I'm a diehard fan of the Marvin, the entire Marvel. Marvel, uh -huh. Marvel. So anything Marvel, I would watch. I love it because it just gives me that, that rush. Mm -hmm. But they broke my heart in oh. Endgame. So I don't know whether they, that one is Why inspirational. Why did they break your heart? But in Nigeria locally, though, I really, really, till tomorrow, I'll still talk about this movie, what, Dry what? by Stephanie Linus. Why? Really? Because it touched something very, very right. real uh -huh. to me. Especially growing up in the north, I saw a lot of my my young friends, you know, that were northerners mm -hmm. getting married at age 11, age 13, and all of that. So for me, when when the when the movie came out, it I, in fact I cried in the cinema because mm -hmm. it was really really painting the picture of what a young girl would go through having a child at a young age and mm -hmm. coming then now being faced with the disease of vvf mm -hmm. and all of that so for me it was really really you know an inspiration for me to watch that movie and not only that discover that after that movie they've had several free surgeries for thousands of girls wow so that for me is something that was really really memorable for mm -hmm. me impactful as well another movie that touched me is um Kulia for lions movie which does it i like to watch nigerian oh. but nigerian movies that make sense that's yeah, it was, was going to say it, maybe because it was real that's the mirage was also another sensitive topic that is dear mm. to my heart they were talking about a girl living with sickle cell and lala akiloju played that role. role it was really nice and she's an amazing actress. yeah she's an she's interpreted mm -hmm. you would think mm -hmm. she has mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. been through sickle cell yeah <laughs> all right so let's quickly move on Oops, Thank God you, you didn't ask me. You didn't ask me. I'm sorry. <laughs> what From movie? Of, I can't remember him. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, my story speaks to the US ban of Nigeria for receiving immigrant visas. And it's, talk, it's now just an update basically saying that the Nigerian government is planning to meet with the US government to forge a way forward. It's. Um, when I saw this ban, I thought it was, uh, what would I call it? It's Trump time, trying to be Trump. Mm. You know, I, I, I just really don't, so true. I just don't like the idea of, um, of Nigerians coming to America. Mm. Nobody talks about the impacts that Nigerians have had. I mean, nobody gen in general talks about the impact that immigrants have had. Things will always go wrong. People will always do the wrong thing. You don't need to go abroad. I mean, we live in Nigeria. We know you don't need to go abroad to do the wrong thing. But if you weigh the amount of visas they've given, I mean, the immigrant visas is only about 5%. And you were just asking about the right to family to life. Family it's life. going to disrupt and a lot of things. It's going to disrupt a lot of things. So um, the story was talking about calling for heads to roll. So between the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, which manages, because the American government is claiming that it is because we don't meet some of the regulations that the US has set. It's not that they are claiming. That's what they said globally across all the countries that they ban. Well, and so two, two countries, if nobody has, I mean, if nobody had been able to, if nobody has been able to re meet up that requirement, I wouldn't really say anything. But I know of two countries mm. that they dropped them off that ban list because mm. they went back and they claimed their house. That's exactly why I said yeah. claiming, because the reality is the Nigerian government is saying no, that these issues were raised in 2017, they've been addressed. So the reason why they're calling for heads to roll now is because they're saying it's a communication gap. Mm. So if we've addressed something and the American government is not aware that we've addressed it, mm. then somebody has to be punished for it. So the whole idea is not about 
is it right? Is it wrong? I think the timing also has a lot to do. American politics, the yeah. elections around the but, corner. But my problem is why target immigration visas? Because, because the there. Problem is. No, I don't think so. I think it's more with visas. People that come mm. in and go, okay, you're banning people who want to migrate genuinely, that want to meet up with family members and all that. And you're not banning people that want to come in and go. Mm. I can still wreck the avoc I want to wreck, even in five days. Yeah. So why do you have to, you know, there are a lot of things that are involved. I was thinking about it, that so it means that a child cannot file for their parents, for their any parents. Longer. And what about the people who's gotten married to American citizens that have their um, their application in the process. What happens to them? I mean, let's not pretend like we don't know what is happening. How people will travel and quickly get one partner and marry to get papers. No, that's not the issue. So let me tell you something. You see, yeah. the thing is that they've had, they've allowed these things to slide over the years, and somebody has woken up and said, "You know what? I'm not, not going to let this anymore. happen." But anymore. that was not the basis. It was because well, of information sharing based on security. Well, well we need to move on. That's what though. they have told us. <laughs> we need but to that's not what it is. Well, we need to move on. <laughs> What's your story, Lami? <laughs> Okay, my story is the Lagos City Marathon that happened today. Yeah. Um, Kenyas are always dominating marathon. And it's not only in Nigeria. I think it's, a, it's they global, do, it's global yeah. for them. So I had to do, I woke up my, my you know, curiosity was, why is it so? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I delved the, into it. Ethiopians. Mm. Yes, and I found out that, number one, their legs. Mm -hmm. They have lighter and longer legs. Definitely. Then another. The terrain in, in Kenya. Yes, the and they have powerful. Yes, and they have powerful lungs. Mm -hmm. I never the knew that. Is the so altitude is high. They have actually yeah, very so they are yeah. used to that people. altitude. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they are used to taking long, so that, yeah. long mm -hmm. distance. And, you know, so they they're able to, and the weather is not really mm -hmm. favorable, but they're able to. But I think it's also the fact that they've embraced it. So we were talking yesterday after the show it's about this concept of coaching, yeah. of mm -hmm. spotting talent and developing talent. Um, Ethiopia and Kenya, those two countries, have actually taken it as almost national pride. Yes. So now they find and cultivate this, um, yeah. uh, what is it called, this talent. Is, yeah. So I, I, I remember watching a documentary and they showed uh, having a training camp somewhere up in the mountains. So they are used to, from a very young age, carrying out this extraneous activity like running yeah. at a very high altitude, breathing in very thin air, and being able to cope. So this is why their lungs over time get a lot a stronger. Standard, yeah. They have a lot more capacity. Well, they have that, yeah. They eat right from day one. So they are actually groomed into that. Yeah. So it's, it's, they've taken <laughs> it as... I was making a joke. I said, with all our apple-founded... Apple? <laughs> 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 How can you win a marathon? You know? We I'm are sorry. good runners. No. Trust me, you can't win we it. Are, no. You can be a good runner, but we, you Win well, you won't win a marathon. But you, you can, you <laughs> My can story is actually linked um, to La Mystery, also talking about the Lagos City Marathon. Uh, a few young people actually went with placards and all of that to the Eco Atlantic, um, um, the, the, end point. the end point, yeah, the they, to protest the ban on the Okada. So they used that as an opportunity, yes, to, to ban, to protest. So the, according to some of the tweets that I read, because it was trending all over Twitter, some people were saying they were using the opportunity, because this is a global event, mm -hmm. the world is saying the it. They wanted to, to air their minds, and they're begging the government that instead of banning the Okada, let us regulate, you know, instead of banning and all of that. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of young people that I saw their placards, somebody said, I work in VI, you know, getting um, getting to my office, I had to trek from Ikoi to VI mm -hmm. because there are no Okadas. Those were all um, the only means of transport transportation that they had. While Uti would disagree with me, you know, I think this ban is a good thing. Yes. You know, because like you rightly said, they had banned during fashion last time, it was the already bandit. banned. And we had all settled. Yes. And we had already settled in well. Yes. No. You know, hold on. We, we can't argue me? that today. Yeah. But we're going to talk about the transportation industry holistically. And let us find lasting solutions. But I still say that Okada is not our solution. No. It's My problem problem is not our solution. Ban. My problem is the implementation of the ban. What's yeah. the implementation change, of the no, ban? Change is fine. Yes. You have to. In Lagos State, we have chaos. And mm. the chaos needs to be regulated. But the have to be imaginative about it. You can't come and tell me that you're exactly like you said, the person with the placard has a placard that says, how do I get from point A to point B within VI? A boat is not going to solve that. A bus is not going to solve that. So you need to come up with creative ways. I Why don't not? have a problem with the ban. All I'm 
saying is be creative about it. Have a plan. We are trying to get the the, I strongly the government is able to talk about I this just, thing. But we will try. Strongly the thing is, let us sit down and look for creative ways Do you know to that get people other countries, to their point A to point B. In other African countries, they are actually promoting two-wheeler taxis. Let's not come and say here because we have bastardized that it is wrong. There is nothing wrong with Okada. There is nothing wrong with tricycles. I've already said today we are going to talk about this. We are going to go at each other, but it's not today. It can't be. It's not today. Today we're talking female genital mutilation. This is my own version of strongly disagreeing with you. Okay. 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 All right. So Raymond Opani joins us after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.